Morning, afternoon, I guess. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa. Glad that you were able to join us during your lunch hour. Um, we have a really great panel on today and how befitting because it is tax season. Um, tax day is approaching actually in just about a month from now. And this is um, certainly an appropriate topic for us to discuss. When I think about filing taxes, I, I always say that I felt a sense of pride when filing taxes each and every year, because even though no one particularly enjoys the process of filing taxes, I've always felt that the reason we pay taxes is so worthwhile. Our dollars are used for healthcare and security. They're used to invest in technology, absolutely education, all the things to help make our lives better. Um, but to a lot of people, filing taxes are intimidating, even a little scary, right? Because they don't know whether they're owe or get a refund or really even just come out even. And this year in particular, there may be even more uncertainty because we've had a lot of changes in the tax law that may affect you. And a lot of uncertainty in, in income and ability to pay. So we know this pandemic has brought about a lot of changes, stimulus checks, changes to retirement plans, tax brackets, standard deductions, and so much more. That means there are new pitfalls and opportunities though for individuals, families, and small businesses this year. And there is another big change this year in that thus far as what has been announced, there's no grace period. So that means that taxes are due April 15th, no time to lose. So we thought how, that we wanted to bring this webinar topic on today, as you know, we started Money Mondays with Melissa um, webinar, it started last spring when the pandemic was at its worst. And so many of our residents and small businesses were hurting financially. I can't believe that we've been doing this Money Mondays with Melissa series for about a year now. Wow, time has really flown by. Now it's a full year later, we're still here. Um, there is certainly a silver lining um, in this, but we're still here in the pandemic and we're providing Chicagoans with access to the best financial resources we can find in the Chicago Treasurer's Office. So on that note, I'm excited to introduce to you our panelists who will help us figure out how to navigate during this tax season. We have a panel March, March, Women's Month. We have a panel full of great women and anyone who knows me knows that I love to see more women in the financial services field. So kudos for our panelists on today. First, we have Kathleen Fox, who is a senior stakeholder liaison with the Internal Revenue Service, who provides education to tax professionals and small business, um, business resource partners throughout the Midwest. She's been with the IRS for about 20 years, and we're glad that she's with us today. And I know that we have a lot of questions for the IRS, right? <laughs> then we have Kathleen Scott Stark. Kathleen Stark is the executive director of Ladder Up, which provides free financial consulting resources, including tax assistance, to help people move up the economic ladder. We also have Tiffany Williams, who is the owner of Tax Sense LLC. She has a master's degree in accounting and works with both individuals and small businesses. We also have Tracy, Tracy Frizzell, who's the executive director of Economic Awareness Council, which is an Illinois not-for-profit that provides statewide financial education programs and educational materials to tens of thousands of Illinoisans every year. We're meeting some new people today. Finally, on our panel today, we have Maribeth Oliver, a public service administrator who has been with the Illinois Department of Revenue for more than 20 years. We have a great panel, I told you. Uh, thank you all for joining us, ladies, and happy Women's History Month for the month of March. And we look forward to jumping into our discussion. 
So let's start with you, Ms. Fox. Um, I'd like to start with you because you're with the IRS, the agency that um, <laughs> I say this because obviously not you particularly because you seem like a very nice lady, but the IRS is an agency that really no one likes to get a letter from, right? So what are some of the biggest changes that you want people to be aware of this year? Thank you, Melissa. Uh, first, let me say that <clears throat> excuse me, the IRS is reviewing implementation for the most recent legislation that just was signed on March 11th. And that was the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. We don't have any official guidance to release yet on those changes. We're, like I said, we're looking at the implementation of those. However, as far as the change to the taxability of unemployment, I know that that's um, an item that is really on everyone's mind right now, especially those who have already filed and claimed that income. So as far as that change goes to the taxability of unemployment, we're urging taxpayers to pause, to not jump in take, to take any action right now. Um, we don't want anyone to take immediate action to amend those tax returns. We'll have in more information on that that will be coming soon. But we're urging taxpayers to just wait for the guidance and don't um, take any action at this time. So, and that, I, I didn't finish that again, for those who aren't aware, that's for the change that up to $10,200 will not be taxable of unemployment benefits. So, Very that good. Is, yeah, that is one thing that I wanted everyone to be aware of. Okay. I just I wanted to address that because it just came out. But a couple of other things to answer your question about changes for this year that we already know about. Um, taxpayers can elect to use their 2019 earned income to figure both their 2020 earned income tax credit and or the 2020 additional child tax credit. So if that would be more beneficial to them to use their 2019 income, they do have that election available to them this year. And then also educator expenses that are claimed on schedule one of the form 1040. Those may include amounts that are paid or incurred after March 12th of 2020 for personal protective equipment, such as disinfectant or other supplies that were used for the prevention of the spread of coronavirus. So that's new. And then also we have uh, $300 charitable contribution deduction. Um, even though, even if you don't itemize on Schedule A, you may be able to take the $300 uh, charitable contribution uh, exemption or deduction. And then uh, there's also, if those who might be impacted from a federally declared disaster, special rules might apply to any IRA or retirement or profit sharing distributions that they took. So those are a couple of things to look forward or to look into if they apply to you. And then also one more thing, the new Schedule E LEP. So that is a new form this year that can be submitted with your tax return if you would like to have communications, written communications with the IRS in a language other than English. So you can find information about that on irs.gov and in the instructions for the form LEP on what languages are available. Wow, okay, a lot of great information. Um, look like we need our um, pen pad and uh, pen for this um, particular panel. So glad that it's being recorded. Uh, now let's move on to Ms. Oliver, same question, um, but I want you to, to approach it in re from the state of Illinois regard. Are there any tax law changes for Illinois that we should know about? We didn't have any tax law changes and we follow right off of the federal tax return. So we do not know what's gonna happen with the unemployment with the 10,200 until they make their decision. Then after they make their decision, we will do ours to see how our ours are gonna flow and that all that information will be available on our website. The only change that we had this year was our exemption allowance changed. It is now 
$2325 per person, $2,325 per person. We kept ours pretty simple this year and didn't do a lot of changes because there were some potential changes with the graduated income tax and we didn't want to throw a lot of taxpayers at once. So we've got it pretty easy this year. It's just taking us time to get everything processed and we're waiting on the IRS to figure out what they're going to do and then we'll decide what we're going to do with the unemployment. All right. Ms. Starks, your organization um, provides tax assistance to individuals. Can you tell us any information that might be useful to know for those who have lost a job or saw a change in their income like severe reductions from 2020? Absolutely. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so first of all, I want to say Ladder Up provides free tax preparation for those individuals that make 32000 or less, or for families that make less than 57000 So for a lot of individuals who did lose their job, they now fall into that bracket and are eligible for our free tax services. Um, and for those, they should just go to our website, ladder up, go ladderup.org. But it depends on, is, to answer your question, it depends on the individual. Um, many are eligible for um, credits that they are not aware of. And so we urge them to just file their 2020 taxes and, to dis and so that they know what they are eligible for. But in addition, as uh, Kathleen Fox said earlier, there are credits where they can look back this year, their earned income credit, they have the, ob the opportunity to look at their 2019 earned income versus their 2020 earned income. And if their 2020 is greater, they're able to use that to calculate the credit for 2020, which could be substantially more depending on when they lost their job and how much their income decreased. So that's an important um, thing to know. But again, it's important to come see us or see anybody file your taxes because depending on your income, you could be eligible for credits that you hadn't been eligible for in the past. Wow, okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Stark. And Ms. Williams, um, certainly you help individuals and small businesses with their taxes. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have about filing taxes? I think this is a great question. Are there any pitfalls that tend to fall into or opportunities that people tend to miss? Talk to us about misconceptions. Hi. Yes, the biggest misconception about people filing their taxes is whether or not they need to file a tax return. Um, some people think that that's something that they can put off for the next year or next few years um, without consulting a tax professional to see whether or not you are supposed to file a tax return. Um, there are very limited instances on when you cannot, when you don't have to file a tax return, like if you're just straight social security income or you make less than a certain amount of money per year. Um, the pitfalls would be, of course, owing taxes. Um, the new W-4 rolled out a couple years ago and it is a more precise way of knowing how much money you should be paying in your taxes um, based on income, your dependents, what credits do you apply for? So it's a more precise tool so that you won't fall into a pitfall. Now, if you do owe taxes at the end of the year, just remember that if you owe more than $1,000, you're subject to additional penalties um, and of course interest. So you shouldn't wanna fall into a pitfall. Get a new W-4 form, fill it out in its completeness, um, seek help if you need help because it is a little overwhelming. It's not just exemptions anymore. It's everything that you have that affects your tax situation. Um, opportunities that I see missed is the fact that people just don't file and get their refund. And by law, IRS gives you three years to claim your refund or is forfeited. So if you do not file by April 15, 2021, your December 31st, 2017 tax return, you basically forfeit your refund if you have one coming to you. So the best practice is definitely talk to a tax professional, see if you have a refund coming and or O because you need to know that information as well and make sure that you are doing the right thing by your taxes so that you won't get those IRS letters in the mail. And of course, we all enjoy checks in the mail. So you can also get your refund. That's very, That's good. very good. Thank you very Thank much, you. Ms. Williams. All right, Ms. Frizzell. 
the Economic Awareness Council. You work to provide financial education to families and youth with limited resources. What are some money saving options and deductions that those individuals may not be aware of when they file taxes this year? Yeah, definitely. One of the most critical supports available to youth and families with limited resources this year is the recovery rebate credit, which is linked to the federal stimulus checks. If someone's eligible for either of the two rounds of the stimulus checks from 2020, but has not received as much money as they're eligible for, they can claim their missing stimulus money by filing their taxes and claiming the recovery rebate credit. Filing your taxes is often not as hard as it seems. You can use the support of a VITA site like LadderUp, which Ms. Stark mentioned already, if you qualify, or many people can use tax software like TurboTax for free through the IRS free file program. Using tax software or a VITA service can help individuals to identify all the deductions or credits that apply to them. You can find out information about both VITA and free file services on our getmypaymentil.org website, which is a coalition that we're involved in on the tax help page. Both video and written instructions on how to use the free version of TurboTax software is also available on this website. Very good. And by the way, our questions are coming in. Keep them coming. We will answer them some as we go, some at the end. This is such an important topic. And I know, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, a very intimidating topic to some. And so I certainly can understand that we have questions. Um, I think what's an interesting point that we brought up from um, our questions just now was that not to wait. Um, even though there are still some questions that the federal government are figuring out, um, still do not wait. If adjustments need to be made, they can be made later. That's correct. All right. I learned that already, ladies. Thank you. All right. So my next question is back to Ms. Fox. Let's go back to you again. And let's talk about stimulus checks. Um, because you mentioned that as well. Many Americans received at least one stimulus check last year. Some received more than one. How, how might those payments affect your tax returns though? Well, that's a good question. And your economic impact payments, it's a good answer. So they're not taxable. So your economic impact payments, whether you received one or two, they're not taxable for federal income tax purposes but they may reduce your recovery rebate credit. So as Tracy said, if you did not get the full amount that you're eligible for, you can reconcile that when you file your 2020 tax return to get the remaining amount. Another good thing on the other side of that is if your income for 2020 um, is uh, larger or um, you're, if you're no longer eligible for as much as you received with your EIP payments, when you go to file your 2020 tax return, you won't owe that money back. So it's a, the economic impact payments, are, it's a, it's a win-win on both sides. So if you didn't get it, you can claim the remaining amount. So the recovery rebate credit and the EIP payments are the same program either received it early or you can get the remaining on your tax return. Um, but even if you did get more than you qualify for when you file your 2020 return, you won't need to pay that back. There so are we, some, I'm sorry, there are some circumstances where it may be, uh, have to be sent back such as it being sent to a deceased person, but for the purposes of your taxable income, if you don't qualify for as much when you file your 2020 tax return, you won't owe that money back. That was clarification on, that was where I was going. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right, um, Ms. Williams, I wanna talk a little bit about the tax law for this year that people might not be aware of. For example, can small businesses and teachers write off COVID prevention supplies? Absolutely. Teachers in particular can definitely write off COVID prevention supplies, the disinfectants, PPE equipment, 
Unfortunately, the amount that you can write off did not maximize. It is still at the $250 per teacher. Um, if you found Mary Fallon jointly, it's $500 if both of you guys are teachers. Um, so yes, you can definitely write off that amount um, and as well as small businesses as well. And there's no limitation to the small businesses. No limitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, hopefully we can work on that um, going further for the teachers um, to increase that. Absolutely. Yeah. Because okay. they're buying okay. school supplies as well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, now, Miss Oliver, actually, I wanted to ask you a follow up question to something Miss Miss Fox mentioned. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about taxpayers who received any sort of assistance from the state. We spoke about the stimulus checks and Ms. Fox indicated that that um, is not a part of the taxable income, but what about um, any sort of assistance from the state? Are there tax implications that residents should be aware of? As long as it's not included in their federal adjusted gross income that they start the Illinois return with, there's no provisions in our tax law currently to add that back in. So it will not be taxable at the state level if it's not included in, in the figure that you bring, bring over from the federal return to start hours. Okay, very good. Thank you, that was clear on that. <laughs> and um, Ms. Stark, let's say someone figures out that they owe a lot of money this year, yet they cannot pay it when it's due by April 15th. What are some options that people have? Because that's one of the fears that people have and one of the reasons people may not necessarily file their taxes. So for us, I would say the first thing is to file the taxes. By April 15th, file the return. Um, ladder Up, as we mentioned, offers a lot of free services for those that do get a letter from the IRS or from the Illinois Department of Revenue regarding past due amounts, any type of tax controversy, we offer a free tax clinic, a legal clinic to help them with those, with those issues. So reach out to us um, and, and we can help you with that. But as far as you know, what their options are for payment, I'll let Kathleen Fox um, answer that question because for the IRS, she'd know more about what their options are as far as how to make those payments. Ms. Fox. Okay, if you would like me to address that now, I believe. Sure, go ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. so first of all, if you owe the IRS, don't panic. And that's, I know it can be a scary thing, uh, but if you can't pay the full amount you owe, you should still file your return on time by the deadline and pay as much as you can with your return to avoid or limit um, any penalties and interest. You should also contact us discuss your options. And that 800-829-1040 is the best line to call. And I'll put that in the chat. The agency might be able to offer you uh, short-term relief, like an extension of time to pay. Um, you might be able to get set up on installment payments that you can afford to pay. Uh, you might also be uh, qualified for what we call as currently not collectible until you are, available, are, are able to pay. So it just depends on what your situation is. Um, in some cases, we may be able to abate some penalties or waive penalties, but we are not able to waive any interest payments. So I encourage everyone on that note to use the tax withholding estimator. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about the W-4. It can be complicated to complete, and to help you do that, the tax withholding estimator at irs.gov will walk you through a paycheck checkup. So you can use this to make sure that you have the right amount of tax withheld from your paycheck or, or you know the right amount of payments to send in as an estimated tax payment to help you get closer to what your tax debt will be when you file your tax return. You don't want to owe a lot of money and you don't want the IRS or the uh, government to hold on to your funds when you could use more in your paycheck every week. So if you use that tool at irs.gov, tax withholding estimator, it can help you fill out that W-4 so that you are in a really good position when you go to file your return. Okay, thank you ladies. 
Ms. Frizzell, let's talk about how Chicago residents can get assistance in requesting their recovery rebate credit or stimulus check, which everyone's actually referred to it as, which are so important this season. Again, talking about how Chicago residents can get assistance in requesting those stimulus checks this season. Yes, there's a lot of concern about people who might be eligible for stimulus checks not knowing uh, how to apply for those. Chicago and all Illinois residents have a great free resource for information on how to get their stimulus checks through the Get My Payment Illinois Coalition. Individuals can go to the coalition's website, getmypaymentil.org, which I also saw your office put in the chat, so thank you for that. Uh, they can go there for information about who is eligible for each round of the stimulus checks, how to request missing payments, how to track their payments, and much more. There's also a hotline, which is 888-553-9777 for those without a computer. The site has information in English and Spanish, as well as information on taxes and banking help more generally. For help with other non-stimulus check related financial issues, I also wanted to mention one new resource, which is the Financial Navigator Hotline, which is specific to Chicago residents. And this number is 773-779-9062. Thank you. All right. Now, Ms. Fox, back to you. Um, let's talk about a situation that I think a lot of people may be worried um, about. Not just that they won't be able to pay their tax bills on April 15th, but that they won't be able to pay it at all, even after April 15th. What can the IRS do <clears throat> for people who are experiencing severe financial difficulty and don't really know where to turn? Well, again, I would have to say contact us. So there are payment options available and there are so, uh, programs available to them. And I mentioned the currently not collectible as being one of those. So there may be some programs that they would qualify for that would be um, determined based on their financial position. They would have to fill out some financial paperwork, but we are absolutely there to talk to them about it and to work with them if uh, that situation occurs. And Ms. Oliver, anything to add from the state? We, uh, we're, we're like everybody else. We'd like for you to make, get as much paid as you can by April 15th. Anything not paid by then will be subject to a late payment penalty. So continue to make the payments. You will receive a bill from us. It'll probably be end of June, first part of July before those start going out. Once you get that bill, you can fill out a form C as in Charlie, P as in Paul, P as in Paul dash one and request a payment plan. And at that point in time, you can put what time of the month you'd like to pay, how often you'd like to pay and how much you would like to pay. It will continue to accrue interest, but it will not go to an outside collection agency or anything once you fill out that form requesting your payment plan. And until that June or July bill goes out, continue to, even if it's just five or $10 a month, every little bit helps and it reduces the amount that you're gonna earn interest on as well. And by the way, we have great questions coming in. Um, we will continue to receive those questions and we will answer them towards the end. So thank you again, great information and great questions coming in. Uh, Ms. Williams, I want you to chime in right here and talk a little bit about tax implications related to retirement savings. I imagine a lot of people did not have much money to set aside for retirement last year, and probably many people had to pull money out of their retirement savings just to get by. How would they be impacted when they file their taxes? Well, um, as far as saving for retirement, I just encourage everyone to set aside whatever monies you can possibly set aside to save for your retirement. The benefit, of course, you're saving for your retirement, but not only that, you're saving your federal and state tax liability um, as well. So if I encourage you, if you have anything, 1%, 2%, it doesn't have to be a lot, 
save it if you can. If you have a job gainfully employed, definitely save for retirement. Um, one of the great benefits of this year is if you did happen to lose your job and you did take money out for um, out of your retirement, you have an opportunity if it was COVID related to avoid your 10% penalty if you were under 59 and a half, um, up to $100,000. So if you have any type of COVID related retirement distribution, you can save your penalty. Your penalty will be waived, your 10% penalty up to $100,000 if it was COVID related. And you're under, of course, that, that 59 and a half. If you're over 59 and a half, you don't have to worry about the penalty. But if you're under, um, you we do have that in the tax laws this year for you. That is great. Wow. All right. Thank you very much for that information. And Ms. Starr, given the recent stimulus package, stimulus payments, are on everyone's minds. Um, I know that the news has stated that some could have received it as early as, I guess this past weekend, just a few days ago. We know there's more information to come about this year's payment, but what should individuals know about the past payments and if they have not yet received them? What could be some reasons why? So we've talked a little bit about that today, um, but I just wanna reiterate, come, they need to file their 2020 tax return. Uh, many individuals who didn't file their 2019 may have not received the second stimulus check. So if you file your 2020, um, you could be eligible for the recovery rebate credit. But again, it just goes back to filing those 2020 taxes, whether you had income or not, to see if you're eligible for that credit. File your taxes. File. Yep. <laughs> no way around it. <laughs> and Ms. Frizzell, why is banking and direct deposit important for people when filing their taxes and applying for the recovery rebate credit? By the way, recovery rebate credit, I just want to also state, is what we call the stimulus checks. So including banking information to receive your recovery rebate check and really to receive any potential refund is an important step in filing your taxes because direct deposit of those funds into a bank account will allow you to receive the funds faster, more safely, and for free. If you already have a bank account, have your account number and your routing number ready when you file your taxes. But if you need a bank account, Chicago has a great program to help you find safe and affordable bank accounts. Bank on Chicago has 12 safe and affordable bank account options available at both banks and credit unions. Learn more about these accounts and information you need to apply for them at bankonchicago.com. Very good, thank you. Wow, what great information. And what I like about it is that we're providing information for everyday citizens. Information that regardless as to your income level, um, this is information that you can certainly use. Um, I really appreciate that, ladies. All right, now moving on to our um, last question for everyone. And we do, um, last question for the panel. Um, but I know that we also have some questions still coming in from the audience that we will answer. So last question from the panel. Um, and in either of you can answer, or actually all of you can answer this question. What is the one piece of advice you want to give people about tax season this year? We're going to begin with Ms. Fox, then Ms. Stark, Ms. Williams, Ms. Frizzell, and Ms. Oliver to conclude. Again, what one piece of advice do you want to give people about the tax season for this year? Okay, limiting me to one piece of advice. Well, okay. you can certainly give more than, we don't wanna <laughs> cheat anyone. So Thank hey, you. there might be some residents wanna hear. So go ahead. Okay, well, I just have a quick couple of things. File electronically, as Tracy mentioned, Filing electronically and choosing direct deposit for your refund, again, is the fastest, safest way. Uh, traditional uh, IRS free file provides a free file online tax preparation and filing options. And that's a partnership between the IRS and online tax preparation software companies. They uh, deliver their uh, products for free and 
This is a no, so, no cost service to qualifying taxpayers. Of course, please note that only taxpayers whose adjusted gross income is 72,000 or less qualify for the IRS free file partners offer. The other free option is free file fillable forms. And those are electronic federal tax forms that you can fill out and file online for free. Now, if you choose this option, you should know how to prepare your own tax return. So no, there, you don't get help along the way to fill out the forms. You need to fill those out yourself. Um, another piece of advice quickly is just to be aware of all the phishing scams that are out there right now. And right now we're seeing an increase in the one that's related to the economic impact payments. These scammers are texting people and they're claiming that they have a payment from the treasury coming, but that they need to click on this link to provide some more information. Well, once you click on that link, it takes you to a fake website and any financial or personal information that you enter, the thieves are then gonna steal. So just be aware that the IRS will not phone you, email you, or text you asking for your personal or financial information. Got that, everyone? Because that's important. The mm -hmm. IRS will not email you, text you, or call you. Is that what you said, Ms. Fox? We will not call you, text you, or email you and ask for personal or financial information. For personal or financial information, okay? That's correct. Very good. Thank you. And then go go on. I'm sorry, Ms. Stark, Ms. Williams, Ms. Frizzell, and Ms. Oliver. So I just want to go back to most of what you said in the beginning. You know, taxes can be intimidating and scary. You know, we're, we've urged everybody today, you need to file. You know, seek that guidance. You know, we, like I said, we offer free services. You can go to our website, goladderup.org to make an appointment. Um, but seek out the services, ask the questions, Get the knowledge you need to be able to file your tax returns so you do get the tax credits or the tax, you know, whatever you're eligible for, you go, you get the right information. So that would be my advice is to seek out the, the knowledge, the guidance, and the assistance that's available to everybody um, and, and try to avoid, you know, that we, like I said, we offer free tax services. There's a lot of tax preparers out there that charge you know, significant um, amount of money to those that don't make very much money. So look for the services that are available to you and, and utilize them. Who, who was next? I believe I'm next. Okay. My, I would tell people to be patient. We've been in the pandemic for a year now. IRS have been busy with stimulus payments, the first and second payment, second payments coming in December. So of course they had to do that. Then fast forward to tax season, which started in February. So they're doing that. And now they have a third stimulus payment that's upon them. Um, so if you did file your taxes, be patient um, with the IRS, with your tax prepare with the Illinois Department of Revenue, just be patient because it's taking time to sort things through, giving all that we've been through this past year. And I don't even think, Ms. Williams, that everyone realized that the IRS was everything that you just stated. The stimulus checks, the tax filing. Um, we just had stimulus checks in December, stimulus checks again. That, wow, wow, yeah. That's interesting. Don't know how they're even keeping up with all of this. So yeah, thank you for that. Go ahead, Ms. Frizzell. I will reiterate uh, some of the advice that the other panelists have had, which is, you know, uh, don't be afraid to take action, uh, filing electronically, having a bank account. Um, there's great help that's out there uh, for people and for free. Ladder Up has wonderful services. If you have questions that are stimulus check specific, anyone in Illinois can go to getmypaymentil.org or call our hotline 888-553-9777 and get their questions answered. And if you need a bank account, check out bankonchicago.com. There's lots of assistance available with either of those things. 
All right, Ms. Oliver. All right, I'm just gonna reiterate again, file electronically and do direct deposit. It's gonna be your quickest and fastest way to get your refund. If you go to our website at tax.illinois.gov, we have a My Tax link out there and you can file online regardless of your income for free using My Tax. And if you are in the Chicago area, we have an office at the James R. Thompson Center that once your federal return is completed, you can take all your tax information and our people at the Thompson Center at 100 West Randolph on the seventh floor, they will be more than happy to help you complete your Illinois return there for free. No appointments there needed. I believe their hours are 8.30 to 4.30. And another piece is if you, if you have someone who's receiving unemployment or are receiving unemployment, make sure that when you sign up for that, you sign up to have state tax taken out because that is taxable in Illinois. So it will help lower the amount that you will owe at the end of the year when it comes time to file your taxes next year. And that really leads to my question. We're going to question and answer now. Um, but I was wondering with the pandemic, um, was um, the opportunity still available for residents to come in in person to do tax filing? And so Ms. Oliver, you just spoke about that, so. Yes, we do have people working in the office they are there 8.30 to 4. Th I, I believe they stopped letting people up at 4.30. They work till 5, but they stopped letting people up the elevators to the seventh floor. And they are there to help you. They are on limited staff. We have half the staff in the office to do to social distancing guidelines. So you may have to wait a little bit because we've got half the staff there that we normally do. But we are open Monday through Friday. Anyone else want to chime in on that? I'll just add that we are open, we're appointment based, but we're open drop off services, our tax, we're doing tax preparation uh, remotely and then meeting with clients afterwards to run through their 1040 with them. So we are up and running. We're in uh, River North. Uh, we're at Truman College in the uh, Uptown neighborhood and we're at Olive Harvey College in the Pullman neighborhood this year. And that's a ladder up. That's the ladder up, yes. And do you all do virtual sessions right now? That was one of the questions too for ladder up. So we're using the same website that the IRS mentioned, which is the, um, the free tax file. Um, you can go to their IRS website and log on, um, but we are not doing 100% virtual through our organization. Okay. Anyone else wanna chime in on in-person and, and all of that? All right. Now here's some questions that came in. Um, how much do you have to earn to file taxes? Is there a certain number? Anyone could chime in, by the way. I'm not picking anyone. Well, there's not a certain number. Um, there's different guidelines. Exactly. Um, as far as if you only have a W-2, um, I believe the lowest is like $12,400. Um, but if you make $10 in interest income, um, you have to file. If you make $600 in non-employee compensation, you have to file. If you have your... Um, 401k monies you have to file so there's there's really a smaller bucket of people that don't have to file versus those that <laughs> that do so um there's about 12 or 13 different guidelines and i can't think of them all off the top oh, of that my was head. very helpful Ms. williams has <laughs> more people that have to file than don't so nope. if you're thinking i don't have to file you probably do <laughs> and uh, i would like to i would like to add that um, for many people, even if they're not required to file, if they've had any withholding that they should file to get that back, or if they're eligible for any credits, they may, it may be beneficial for them to go ahead and file, oh. even if they're not required. Very good. It may pay off. And I just want to add, if you, if you file a federal return, you are required to file a state of Illinois return. And if you earn under that $2,325 exemption allowance this year, even if you aren't required to file federal, you can still file your state return and get back all that withholding that was taken out of your paycheck if you aren't under the exemption allowance. Anyone else? Good information. All right, next question. With unemployment, does that only go for those who receive in 2020, not 2021? I wonder what is that question in regards to? Do you all remember that was an early on question? I think that's um, due to our discussion on the 2020 
unemployment not being taxable or the first $10,200. Mm -hmm. And so we would not um, at this point have any information on what's received in 2021. We're just now working through the implementation of this new tax change that just was signed into law last week regarding the 2020 uh, taxable or non-taxable unemployment benefits. Very good. Um, what about taxes being taken out of unemployment? Will residents have to pay taxes on that? I think we answered that earlier, but anyone want to just grab that? When you sign up for unemployment, you definitely want to make sure that they are taking out state and I'm assuming as well as federal income tax, because when they do that withholding, yeah, your unemployment check will be a little smaller but it'll save you from having a huge bill come next April when it's time to file your tax return because that is all tax. I mean, it will be taxable in Illinois. Okay. Now, this is an interesting question because in the pandemic, we know that a lot of lives were lost. And this question is, um, someone stated they had several family members that passed away during um, the pandemic. Is there any tax credit assistance if the person cared for that family member. Now that's interesting. I don't know if, if anyone even knows that answer. That probably has to be well thought out to see kind of what, I would assume it depends on what expenses were paid, um, whether it could be on the schedules and, and all of that. I don't know necessarily if there's anything in particular, particular to through the pandemic, if you care for someone, what expenses they were, more so of what expenses was, was done and you all probably as tax consultants will need to look at that on a case by case, I would assume, but someone can chime in. The only thing I can think about, oh, I'm sorry, um, off the top of my head, there is a credit for self-employed people. Um, if, if this was like a job for this person, I'm assuming, if they weren't able to operate because of the job during that time, there is a credit for self-employed filers um, this year. It's a little different how they're asking the question. I'm thinking the only way you could take any proper deductions if this was a business that you had and you were caring for the family members. I'm not sure if there's anything else that will qualify you for a tax credit, but um, there is a self-employed credit for people that has small businesses that could not operate due to them being sick or family members being sick. That's on the, on the taxes this year. Go ahead, Ms. Oliver. There would need to be legislation passed for the state in order to create that credit. As of now, there hasn't been anything passed, but that's not to say that they won't propose anything later down the road. But as of right now, nothing has been done as far as legislation to create that credit. But some expenses, regardless as to whether you were taking care of a family member or not, some expenses could possibly be scheduled through your taxes, right? Itemized deductions, right? Wow. That, would ha that would have to be on the federal because the state doesn't have the itemized deductions. Th th those are all on the federal level. Yep, got it. But it certainly is possible, but again, you know, every situation is different. And so once you speak with your consultant and talk about those expenses, they may be able to guide you a little bit further. All right, now, this is a good question um, because I know some people that did not receive their stimulus checks and really don't know why. And as Ms. Williams spoke about IRS, very difficult um, to get in touch with right now. They're very busy, got a lot going on, obviously, um, but, could one of the reasons that someone did not receive, receive their stimulus checks be that they owe back taxes? Well, the first stimulus payment or economic impact payment um, was offset if they owed back child support. But the payment number two was not offset for any federal, state, or child support debts that were due. Wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? That I mean, that, that answered the question. Anyone else needs to chime in? I was just going to say that if people are wondering, you know, they're concerned they didn't receive uh, what they expected, again, feel free to call the Get My Payment hotline and someone can, you know, help walk through 
uh, what might possibly be going on and what to do. So if somebody has a question like that, that's very stimulus payment specific, um, definitely feel free to reach out. And what's that hotline again? I didn't yeah. see that anyone. It's, put in the, it in it's in the, I just put it in the chat. It's 888-553-9777. Got it. Got it. Get my payment hotline. Thank you. All Illinois residents. Okay. And I think we have one more question. Um, if we have not filed 2020 as of yet, can we use the 2019 file to determine eligibility for stimulus? Hmm. Does anyone understand that question? Um, I know that there was some mention earlier about using 2019 for 2020, like for loss of employment or something of that sort. Um, the well, question reads specifically, if you have not filed 2020 yet, can you use 2019 file to determine eligibility for stimulus checks? Oh, okay. Got it. So so I didn't file 2020 and wanted to know could 2019 be used to determine eligibility for stimulus checks? Well, I think the confusion there might be, uh, we did mention previously that they have the option or they can take the election to use their 2019 income to figure their, their credits for earned income tax credit and additional child tax credit. Correct. That is, that is not the stimulus payments. It is for the additional child tax credit and the earned income tax credit that they have the option to use their 2019 income if that would benefit them instead of using their 20, but just to calculate those credits. Anyone else? Okay. And Kathleen Fox can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the question is more for the stimulus checks, for this upcoming stimulus check, what taxes are gonna be used to calculate, what year is gonna be used to calculate that? And my understanding from what I've read is that it's going to be based on whatever's been filed. So 20, if they haven't filed 2020, I believe it's based on 2019. But I don't know if Ms. Fox has a different answer to that. Um, I think it's going to go off whatever is most recent. That you're correct. Whatever is the most recently filed in information on the return. Thank you, ladies. Um, I think, and there was one last question that um, I don't know if the panel can just answer, just um, it's it's a question that I think it's, it might be a little bit too specific and they may need to speak with the tax consultant, but I just wanna ask the question because it was asked of us. What additional schedules will I need to submit if I have investment income from the stock market to report on my taxes? And that's number one. Number two, is there a threshold of investment income that needs to be met before additional filings are needed? If anyone wants to chime in, um, like I've stated, otherwise there may be um, a question that um, depends on the person and needs to be um, answered by a consultant directly. So that's what we'll say. Thank you. I guess I answered it. Ms. I would say I mean, they, they can do so they'll they'll get a 1099 so from so let's say I know there's some popular uh, websites out there where people are investing in the stock market and things like that they will if well, you have an account you'll get a statement and it's a 1099 I'm going to say B um, form that will show what they earned and they just need to bring that and give it to their tax preparer or you will input that information as far as the threshold I believe it's the same as interest, but it's pretty low. But I would just say you should be able to get a statement from whatever source you are investing in that shows what gains or what losses you had. Um, and anybody can feel free to correct me, but I believe that's the, that's the guidance I would give. Now, this is a good question. We spoke about um, withholdings, federal and state withholdings from unemployment. Um, this has been an eye opener for some of our listeners. And so someone asked the question, if they had not yet had federal and state withholdings, can they start those adjustments even now? Yes, for the state, you can do it at any time. They'll just need to fill out an ILW-4 and give them to whoever they want the money withheld from, whether it's unemployment or, or wherever, and they will start doing the withholding for you. Yes, and that goes the same for federal. You can 
start your withholding or change it at any time. And you should to make sure that it's accurate. Very good. Wow, ladies, this was absolutely awesome, all timely within our hour time frame. And um, by the way, someone asked for the contact information for our panelists. Um, for all of those that did register for the event, we will provide that information to you. Um, but um, panelists, I know you all have been um, inserting information in the chat. If you want to do that, you certainly can. But we will be providing that information to um, all of those that registered for the event. Um, I really thank the panelists for today. I know that this is a topic that can be intimidating, but this is a very important topic that knowledge is certainly power. <laughs> and so I really thank um, all of our panelists, um, as well as all of the attendees that were able to join us on today. And remember April 15th, remember April 15th. Now we'll, again, as I mentioned before, we'll be sharing notes and materials with all of you via email. So please make certain you watch out for that. And in the meantime, be certain to visit our website for upcoming events and panels such as this and other resources that we have available through chicagocitytreasurer.com. Again, chicagocitytreasurer.com. Of course, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And certainly if you have any additional questions, please let us know. We hope that you were able to get your questions answered and thank you for joining Money Mondays with Melissa. And ladies, we had a lot of great thank yous coming in from the attendees today. Really, really good information.